Hey guys, Burks here with a look at the Inside Star Citizen Salvage Operation. Um, assuming this is going to be about the new salvage mechanics, there's been a lot of controversy over uh, if they're good, if they're bad, if it's too low effort. Some people say CIG should have waited. Some people say it's a fine placeholder. Let's see what CIG has to say about it. Here we go. So what happened since the last time we talked about salvage? So the last time we talked about it, it was about the prototypes that we were doing with uh, the entities born from the entire piece, so the thousands and thousands of entities. We had to reconsider our approach quite a lot because it was apparent from the prototype that several aspects of it weren't really going to work the way we wanted to. With the demo failing, this was that citizen con. basically showing us the limits of our engine, which was the entity count, uh, by showcasing that it takes a really long time to spawn all the entities that would fit the size of an 890 jump. We also had to reconsider some things because we wanted to get this in players' hands as soon as possible. So that means making a few adjustments to the scope. We were asked to come up with a solution by the end of this year, which is Structural Savage. All right. Structural salvage is breaking apart various ships in order to break down the pieces into construction material, which then you can sell. So it's just removing stuff from the persistent database. So one of the challenges of developing a live game like Star Citizen is that we have to constantly be weighing up, trying to perfect a feature which could take years or trying to get something playable in players' hands so that we can start getting feedback from it and learning from it and figuring out how it fits in with the rest of the game. So it was very important for us that we get some version of it out this year. It's not the full version yet, but it's a good first step that allows us to test the feature and close the ships that we already have that are the Vulture and the Reclaimer. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I first heard that people were mad that they added this, I was like, here we go again. The classic Star Citizen community complaining about CIG making progress or whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, people just get really up in arms about stuff. Um, and I went and tested the salvage. I flew the vulture. It, it went good. I was like, I don't know why people are complaining. And then I sat down in the co-pilot seat of the reclaimer and i said i understand i understand why some people are upset about this uh it is like you don't aim you literally left click and that's it so it's like kind of a one-man job you could do everything on the reclaimer by yourself especially with the new buffer which i like the buffer don't get me wrong but it definitely makes it a solo ship uh you can very much solo a reclaimer now uh, but the experience that you get using the claw is just very lackluster it leaves a lot to be desired so i understand why people are a little upset but anyways let's keep watching the new vulture gameplay builds on what we already have the idea is that you'll approach a wreck we want to encourage you to use the hull scraping first so you don't lose the rmc in the process which is higher value per seu than construction materials so Good the job CIG, that was with a Resonance. They buffed RMC to 14K, if you guys didn't know. Uh, it was 7K in live. And so RMC, which is the stuff you get from scraping particularly, is now double the price. Field, which allows you to charge up energy on the target. Assuming that it's still in one piece, if you've not already blown it up with guns or missiles or something, you'll have to fracture it first. A fracture field is built up between the arms, but it's also projected outwards. Which will break it down into various parts. We wanted to make sure that the resonance field wasn't going to create opportunities for griefing. So uh, we've taken the precautions a step further from hull scraping, which requires that the target's shields are off, to structural salvage requiring that the ship's power is entirely off. So it'll be quite hard to use that offensively unless you find a way to disable the target's power plant. And then <sighs> Yo, uh... Don't tell CIG you can salvage people's ships inside their hangars when you spawn them. <laughs> I'm not joking. You can do that. Um, 
Yeah, someone should probably report that to them. Then you switch to the disintegration mode, which then disintegrates those parts and draws them into your salvage ship as construction material. Then into the, the grinder and then into the internal storage. And from there, you can then move it out through the filler station into the cargo grid. The internal storage is one of the great additions we've made here. What that is, is basically a temporary great idea. storage between you gathering the material and you putting the material into cargo boxes. You have more space inside of your ship. So when you now go back to the filler... Yo, hold on. I have to comment on this guy's Sith cloak. I love it. Fucking sick. Stations, instead of the material just being stored in the filler station, you now draw from this pool of internal storage. That is slightly bigger than uh, the actual cargo capacity of the Vulture and the Reclaimer. So you can basically fill up your ship first while it is still filling, while it is partly full or when it is full, you have someone else or yourself go down to the filler station and basically convert everything or all the resources that you have inside the, the internal storage into the cargo boxes. The boxes come out automatically, so they deplete the internal storage and you will be able to move those boxes around on the cargo grid. Which does really help with the player experience of the Vulture. A lot of people yes. were saying was problematic because there was a lot of getting up from the seat, going back and then going back to the pilot seat again. So uh, this is an improvement there. Huge. Massive. Once you've Great job. essentially got all of the stuff out of the filler stations, you'll be able to fly them somewhere and sell them. The Reclaimer gameplay is very similar to that of the Vulture, except that it's all done by the claw operator, who is the co-pilot seat. You may notice that the claw of the Reclaimer will look different. I think the art team did a really good job there. I do like the new so look of the claw. To start looking at the structural salvage feature support. Yeah, the feature team reached out to us and explained to us what they wanted to do and, and how it was all going to work. And obviously that means that from our point of view, there's a few things we needed to do. It's always had this kind of great big claw underneath it, you know, underslung under the cab. And now is the time that we were going to look at it and kind of make that nice kind of feature of the ship actually function. Now we have the gameplay defined and redesign or revisualize the claw. We didn't want to just kind of start from scratch. We wanted to take the essence of the original, but rework it to a way that now made sense with how the actual feature works as a whole. One of the things we wanted to do was make sure that the claw was in the player view when you were sat in the, um, the operator seat. And because of that, we tried a few different options out with the claw kind of like facing forward originally, and then we kind of had it facing up. We wanted to have the hand of the claws actually upward facing so that we have it easier accessible by the tractor beam gunners on the reclaimer so they can feed into the, the hand. But we realized with the updated position that is more forward facing, it makes more sense because we had to navigate that the, the hand is below it. And with the tractor beam, it still works. You mm. will no doubt have noticed that we're no longer calling this feature munching. And that's because we just didn't have the bandwidth to support an actual physical munching action of the claw. On the original, it was like claw that would rip things apart. Now the feature isn't working like that. So now it acts as the field emitter for the resonance and disintegration field. You can still start with hull scraping and we highly encourage you to, to actually do that so that you get the, the RMC, which we will increase in value. So it will be worth your time to actually do the extra step. And claw will activate the resonance field or fracture field of the claw. And the claw operator then needs to communicate with the pilot to bring the claw into the position of the target that you want to fracture. Once the target is in the fracture field of the claw, the claw operator will press a button, a timer will run down, and the ship that is affected by it will break into pieces. Currently, you're not able to move the claw around, but the remote turrets do have tractor beams on them. Not only you can hold the objects or rotate the objects with the tractor beams, you can now also pull the objects into the resonance this is field cool. or into the disintegration field. The idea is that you use the tractor beams to grab any drifting See, pieces and move them into the field and the next I, I like where cig's heads at on this but the problem is is that that's realistically not what's happening right what's realistically happening is the pilot is moving his mouse one inch to the left and then just pointing the dif disintegration field thing at the claw you know like it's i think that cig likes to 
think that players aren't going to pick the laziest way to do things sometimes. And when I say lazy, what I really mean here is efficient, right? Because it's like, oh, like I could like go get in the turret seat and then hand you the piece. Or I could just like literally pitch the ship to the left like an inch, right? Or yaw to the left an inch. Anyways, I don't know. It's fine, but it's just funny the Except way that they assign this actually converting tasks. those pieces that you just created into the resources that you want to gather and for that the claw operator will switch into the disintegration mode again you press a button the ship is basically heated up and then converted into a material we needed a way of getting collecting all that material and that's where we decided to take some inspiration from what we did on the the vulture between these kind of big emitters we were still sucking in all this material and that material was then being processed and ground up and kind of sent down to the main ship itself. And then directly moved into the internal storage of the Reclaimer. The filler stations in the Reclaimer have been changed as well because the Reclaimer is such a big ship and having it just one SEU containers for like 360 SEU This is a great idea. ...was laborious. To that, uh, we also allow you to uh, create bigger boxes now on the Reclaimer. So it's not only the one SU boxes that you currently have, but it's one, two. We don't have four, but we have eight and 16. Which then you can go about stacking to your heart's content. We really wanted to reduce the amount of back and forth that you have to do. And we think it's a, it's a good solution one of the cool. distinctions with the Reclaimer, though, is that it can break apart basically any size target, whereas the Vulture is limited to uh, you know, only up to a certain size of ship. So currently, anything above, I think it's a Star Runner, can't be fractured by the Vulture, which is something you would need the Reclaimer to fracture. So if you can find one of these big wrecks, obviously there's a lot of material to be gained from this which means obviously more SCU to be sold at the end, which is vastly more profit. We like to think that it would be more profitable to do this than the Vulture, but obviously the Vulture is still very much convenient if you're a single player who goes around doing single player salvage. We're still very interested in enhancing the destruction side of structural salvage, more similar to what was originally conceptualized with munching, but we're going to have to wait for Maelstrom to be more fully realized before we can start experimenting with that. So we've done a few things to improve the quality of life of salvage in general. First of all, the Vulture has some interesting features that you can control each of its little salvage arms independently so that you can hold onto a target with a tractor beam. Some of the elements that you will have in front of you, the sum of all the, 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 the pieces that you will have in front of you, will be too much for your cargo hold. So what you shouldn't do in that time is actually trigger the disintegration because every material inside that field will be disintegrated. So material will be lost that way. This is where the tractor beams come in place because you can move out those objects that would make the, your internal storage overspill. So you, you get this nice little gameplay of, yeah, I, I actually mm. pick what I want to grab. <laughs> we also already in slight update to the crafting that we have in there. So now that this we have is cool two materials, too. we adjusted the, the crafting costs in the, in the filler station. So they are now more realistic, so they are not punishingly expensive anymore. For the future, it will be even more meaningful because then like the material composition will be different. So it's not only construction materials, but it's specific to the parts that you have there. But that is for the far future, so it's not for now. One of the, the most prominent quality of life features is the changes to the filler station. Keeping those expectations in check. And the reclaimer. They now have the option to set the filler station to auto eject mode, where it will just repeatedly eject the last selected crate, which lets you rapidly unload the internal storage into cargo boxes as long as you're quick enough at putting them on the cargo grid. Releasing Structural Salvage in 322 will give players an opportunity to play it and start giving us feedback on how we can continue to build on it for the future. Cool. Salvage, like its industrial profession cousins mining and cargo, is an iteratively developed feature that gets its next evolution in the upcoming Alpha 322. And if we've learned anything this week, it's that the path is almost never a straight line. I'm serious. Torsten has been on Spectrum all week providing even newer details than what was available when we filmed. You're going to want to check that out. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. 
Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you. We'll see you all here next week. Yeah, it seems. Oh, this is so funny that I'm getting a follow right now because I'm not live. <laughs> so that means someone just followed me off stream. So weird. Um, but anyways, what um, I was going to say was uh, I think this is a great step in the right direction for salvage. Clearly, the CIG team wanted to do more with this. And I think they, too, are disappointed for the fans of the Reclaimer, but they won't say that. Um, not really trying to defend CIG here, but I do really like the pace that they're moving at lately because if they keep on moving at this pace and the things that we're hearing about come to fruition, uh, next year could be a really insane year for Star Citizen. And that's good for everyone, right? As Star Citizen fans, it's a good time to be alive. It's a good time to be a fan. So... Yeah, appreciate you guys watching. I think salvage stuff looks great. I'll see you guys in the next one. And this is Burks signing off.